Hey, what is up, YouTube? Colst here. We are here, and Twitch chat is here as well. We are going to get started with the Murder Castle Nathria card reviews. We're going to start with, we're going to separate them all by class, basically because I figure I might as well do them all at once at this point because I had gotten so far behind that I, it's just might as well go through all of them. Probably going to go through the ones that I've already done very quickly because we've already done them, but otherwise we're going to go class by class, start with the neutrals here, and then there'll probably be a video for each one, so... Without further ado, I guess that's all I want to say, like, subscribe, comment, all this stuff. Might as well put all the intro stuff in here, because I'm probably not going to want to repeat it 11 times. So let's just get right into it. And I believe we have the uh, Pepe Star emote enabled for people in chat, so people can use that to give their own ratings of these cards as well. So you guys can keep me in chat and see what you guys think about these. But with that, let's start with the neutrals. So the first one here is Dredger Staff. This is a one mana one two. Neutral, common, Balcry. I should stop saying neutral because they're all neutrals, but Balcry, give your minions in your hand plus one health. So this compares a lot to cards that like Paladin and Druid have, which are just give your hand plus one plus one instead of, except instead of giving the hand buff a plus one attack, it just gives you a one two body. And personally, thinking about this, I think this is worse than those, but it's in neutral, so certain classes that didn't have access to it before will get it, but I think I'd actually have a plus one attack hand buff personally, because just in a typical situation, you play this on turn one, and then both you and your opponent play a 2-3, at the end of that exchange, you have a 2-2, two -two, where if it was just a plus one plus one hand buff, you would have had a 3-2, and then you also, at the result of this, have... A weaker hand buff in your hand so i think this is actually significantly worse than just a plus one plus one hand buff for one mana so i don't and i don't even really like plus one plus one hand buffs for one mana personally because i don't maintain a huge hand size so for me this is a significantly below average card the one thing it, the one advantage it does have compared to just a plus one plus one hand buff is it will trigger an infuse because you're getting another body that's going to go out there and die very early so that might be the one advantage that could make this card actually better so if you don't know what infuse is we'll talk about some infuse cards very soon but basically you're it's a mechanic that allows you to buff cards in your hand based off your own minions dying so that's what this will be able to do but to me i would rate this like maybe a two to three star card something you don't really want to draft next one we have here is sinstone totem this is a one mana zero three totem at the end of your turn gain plus one health so obviously this is just not a card you want pretty much ever like um the idea would be you put this in i guess like priest or paladin and it could just stick around did not die and then you can buff it and then it does something but generally speaking you don't want to be drafting these types of cards in arena infused material it doesn't your opponent doesn't even have to kill it though it won't even trigger the infuse that's the thing but yeah it's a terrible card don't draft it unless you have some meme combo you want to pull off next one we have here is anonymous informant this is a two mana two three secret synergy card battle cry the next secret you play costs zero so there is actually a neutral card that allows you to get secrets in all classes so this is not really just a mage Rogue has secrets now, which we'll talk about in another video. It's not only valid in Mage Hunter, Paladin, Rogue. It's actually slightly valid in all classes, but you know, you're not gonna like expect that. So basically this is a river croc in most of the classes, but very good in the other classes. So, you know, depending on which class you're in, it's like maybe a two to three star card in the non-secret classes and probably at least like a four star card in the secret classes. So. But uh, yeah, so draft accordingly. The next one we have here is Crooked Cook. This is a two mana one four rare minion. At the end of your turn, if you dealt three or more damage to the enemy hero, draw a card. So on curve, this is just a two mana one four, right? Unless I guess unless you're a rogue and you play that three one or something, you're not triggering this on curve ever. But if you play this later on, you know, if you even have just a 3-4 on the board or something, you just hit base with it, and then this goes off, and then you get a card draw, and then your opponent also has to kill it, or else you can continue to get more card draw. This is not just, like, a battle cry. This is an ongoing effect. So overall, this could be very, very obnoxious, 
of course, it requires you to be kind of on board, at least on board or really winning to really be able to like get repetitive damage out of this. A two mana one four draw card is actually very good, really, but um, you're not always gonna be able to rely on it, right? Because if you're off board, it's just not gonna do anything. So overall, probably it's gonna be a little bit hit or miss, I think. So you know, two to three star card, probably not premium, but. Especially if you have a more, if you have a deck that's trying to be on board, like any of my decks, I'll probably end up taking this a fair amount because you can make it work then, but it's still a little risky. Moving on next, we have Maze Guide. This is a two mana one one Battlecry summon a random two cost minion. So most, t <laughs> I think, I imagine actually, I don't know if they changed it where this thing can no longer summon itself that's actually pretty important but overall like most of the time when you get a random two cost minion there is a two, there is a four four even being added in this set but overall you're probably gonna get at least a two two and if this is a two two then this is already good like that's a class two drop in druid is a just a two mana one one plus a tree and so this thing is usually going to be good and as well in addition to that it's two bodies for infuse so that's also very, very important. So overall, probably the best two drop in the game overall. Maybe you may, maybe you prefer like the secret one if you have a bunch of secrets by off chance, but generally just a very, very good card. So you're gonna be drafting this pretty highly. One of the other best two drops in the game though is Priest of the Deceased. This is the first infused card we talked about, or we're gonna be talking about, so this is the infuse mechanic. This is a two mana, two, three, infuse three, gain plus two plus through two, and it has taunts. So basically this means if three, the number means that's how many minions you have to have die while this is in your hand. So if three minions die while this is your hand, this is a two mana Yeti taunt, which is very, very strong. So even if you're just playing like Sometimes you're just going to play this on curve, especially if you don't have a super aggressive deck, you're going to be pretty happy to just play this. But also, if you have another two drop, you can just hold this until it gets infused and then you play it later on for a nice potential. But the strongest use of this card is going to be in an aggressive deck where, you know, you might have something. Maybe you have something like this. Maybe you have this and a one drop and then you can just infuse this on turn three with another one drop or on turn four with a two drop or something. That, that would be the strongest use of this is aggressively. And if you can trigger that, like, if you can trigger this aggressively while curving out by turn three, turn four, you are probably just going to automatically win. So very, very strong potential card, and it's a card that's just never going to be bad. So very, very good two drop as well. Next one we have here is Roosting Gargoyle. I looked over most of these cards. I've actually never seen this one somehow. I've dodged this. But yeah, two mana, two, three battle cry, give a beast plus two attack. So obviously certain classes have a lot more beasts than others. You can always get some neutral beasts, but overall you're probably not expecting too much out of this text. It's mostly just going to be a two mana, two, three. Obviously it's going to be a little bit better in some classes than others. Just not much to say there, but probably I guess like a three star card basically as a result of that. Moving on next, we have Sketchy Stranger. It's a two mana, two, two battle cry. Discover a secret from another class. So this is that secret card we were talking about earlier, the way you can get secrets in any classes, because this is neutral. And I believe the way it works is basically all the secrets are in a pool and you just discover, you pick three random ones. It's not guaranteed to give you like the same class or different classes or whatever, it'd be completely random. So overall, yeah, you are paying, it's a two mana two two, but you essentially discover a card, but you're discovering secrets and secrets aren't particularly good. There's going to be like just weird things you can do, things that you're not supposed to be allowed to do in certain classes that get enabled by this. But you're going to be at a bit of mercy of the RNG, I think, because there are a lot of pretty bad secrets that you might not necessarily want. But yeah, one interesting interaction is that because it's from another class, you the best class for this is going to be the class which I believe is which I believe, it, aren't Rogue Secrets bad? I thought Rogue Secrets were bad, but like, you want to have the class which has the worst secrets so that those are taken out of the pool and then you're guaranteed to get the better ones. I'd have to like look through and it's going to depend on the rotation exactly which sets are in. We don't know that yet, but you want a class that has bad secrets, ideally. And then this is good. 
Oh, that's the best. But overall, yeah, it's it's good value for a card. Because you can get, like, Paladin. You can get, like, one of the Paladin ones that's one mana and really cheats a lot of mana. You can get the Hunter ones that are good. It's going to be pretty good overall. Next, we have Volatile Skeleton. There's a 2 mana 2 2 Death Rattle. Deal 2 damage to a random enemy. So it's fake critical that it says random enemy because that means it can go face, which means if you play this on curve and your opponent plays a 2 3, if those guys trade into each other, the 2 3 might not even die. And that's going to limit the potential of this card quite a bit. It's going to, you know, not feel great because there are a lot of 2 mana 2 3s going around right now. There's a lot more even coming in this set. So. A lot of times this isn't even going to trade evenly on board, and that's going to be pretty pretty weak. But overall, you throw it out later, it does maybe more than a... At least later on in the game, it probably does more than a 2-3 does. So, you know, it's like worse earlier on, but better later. So overall, it's probably about the same as a 2-3 most of the time. So, you know, draft accordingly. And if you have death rail synergies, it can trigger that. There will be some of that as well, so... Keep that in mind, but yeah, not a super, super good card. Talking about not super, super good cards, we move on next to Ashen Elemental. It's a 3 mad 2 4 Battle Cry. Whenever your opponent draws a card next turn, they take 2 damage. This is an epic. You won't see it very much. You also won't see it because people probably won't be drafting it too much. I don't know. People might draft a card like this, actually. But the point is, it's whenever they draw a card, which that includes the draw at the start of the turn. So they do always take 2 damage. And I don't know. You can imagine in Constructed, in theory, I don't think this card will see Constructed play either, but like, in theory, you could block some turn that you know that they want to draw cards, but I don't know, how, how much realistically is that going to work, right? Like, I don't know. If you are playing, like, Hunter, you might take it because it's at least two face damage, right? But you wouldn't see it as being worth too much more than that. Most often, be a niche pick at best. You probably won't draft this very much. But having said that, I mean, a 3 mat 2 4 isn't that bad, so it's probably, like, yeah two star card maybe but that's not very not very strong and pre pretty much only two star in a, in a in an aggro deck it's like one star in an ag in a control deck moving on next here we have creepy painting this is a three man zero six common card after a minion another minion dies become a copy of it so basically this is like a faceless manipulator but you have to work for it a lot harder because you actually need to be able to kill the minion theoretically if you you know your opponent has a giant minion on board you can play this plus a removal like a shower death or something and then you just get you really do just get like a three mana faceless manipulator so the upside is very very strong you can also theoretically just play this on curve and just it's not gonna it's probably not gonna die because it has six health and then you can just eventually you know use it on something else the issue is is that it's whenever you know it triggers its effect whenever the first minion dies so if you there's like just random little minions on board then you just can't use this unless you're specifically comboing it immediately so overall i think it's going to be I don't think it's going to be that bad because you can choose when to play it and you can always play it when you're trading off at worst like probably your own three cost minion right like you, you're probably gonna be able to get something i don't think this is ever going to be absolutely it's going to be pretty rare this is absolutely terrible and there's going to be times where it's amazing so overall i think it's going to be fine probably not, it's going to be fine most of the time and it's going to be very very good it's going to be potentially game winning sometimes so i think overall that makes it a, actually a very good card maybe not super premium but i would say that this is at least this is definitely at least three stars and maybe even four personally that's where i would put it but you it's going to be a lot better specifically if you have you know removals and things that can kill big minions it's when you would want to have it it would be a bit worse if you just don't have removals but overall i don't think it's going to be terrible very often i think you can make it at least do something reasonable for you next one we have here is dinner performer finally a tiny fin activator here this is a three mana two three battle cry summon a random minion from your deck that you can afford to play so if you have a tiny fin in your deck it's perfect you get a razor fin hunter that thins out your deck, it's glorious, no. But um 
Overall, I think this is another card that a lot of people might see as bad, but I don't think this will be terrible because you can play this. You you can't really play this on curve, really, right? Unless you literally have a tiny fin and that's not even good. But what you can do here is play this on like turn five or turn six, and then you're just getting like, on turn five or turn six, I think you're just getting like a two or a three drop most of the time. And then you're just getting a lot of stats for three mana. It's pretty good. But also, if you play this later on, there's always going to be a chance you play this on 10 mana and you just get lucky and pull like a 6 or a 7 drop out of your deck. But it does not... It, the critical thing here is that it's just a random minion that you can afford, which does not mean... And most of the time you have a lot of early game cards in your deck, so you're not going to get an amazing card on average, but you'll probably get something pretty good on average. So... This is definitely not like premium, but it's again gonna probably just be pretty good. It's gonna be a card that occasionally just wins the game, but most of the time it's just gonna be it's just gonna pull something kind of decent. So overall, not too bad, not too bad. It can pull your Ivis out of your deck. That would be a uh, tragic. Next one we have here. Oh boy, this card. Forensic Duster. This is a 3 mana 3 4. Bow cry. Your opponent's minions cost one more next turn. Oh, this card. I'm kind of surprised how low some people I saw rating this card because I think this might be the best 3 drop ever printed. I think this is significantly better. I actually think this is significantly better than Sun Wellness shit. Well, people are rating this only like 4 stars. I think this is better than Sun Wellness shit on average. I think this is very, very good. Because, um, obviously, if you play it before they play your 3-drop, it does about the same on curve as a Sun Wellness shit. And it's vulnerable to four, a 4 damage removal in the same way. But yeah, like, this is very, very good. The other critical thing is compare this, comparing this to a Sun Wellness shit is it's much, much better later on as well. Because this still has an effect. Like, a Sun Wall just gets removed. But this gets... This actually played later might even be better. Because your opponent gets... Each minion costs one more, so they might get have to pay the tax multiple times if you play it later on. So it's just always very, very good. There's no point in the game that this is bad, and you can just block curve plays and stuff. So yeah, this is just terrifying. I've seen people already wanting to ban this card, which yeah, it's it's going to be frustrating. It's very, very good. Moving on. Next we have Invitation Courier. This is a three mana three four rare minion. They like three man three fours nowadays. After a card is added to your hand from another class, copy it. So this is only really valid in Priest is getting a lot of ways to do this. Um and Rogue has always had ways to do this, or not always, but recently has had ways to do this as well. But otherwise, this is a three mana three four. So it's a spider tank in most classes. But in those classes where you can activate this, this is very, very good. Because there are a lot of ways to cheaply add cards from other classes to your hand in Rogue and Priest. So in Rogue and Priest, this is probably like premium. This probably is like... I said that this is like the best 3 drop ever printed, but this is like almost as good probably in Rogue and Priest. But in other classes, obviously, it's just a spider tank. So, yeah. Pick accordingly. Next up, we have Murloc Holmes. This is a card we covered i actually already covered fall to skeleton this is a card we if you want to go back to our old video we had a much longer discussion about this card um but essentially this is a three mana three four that like something like 10 to 15 percent of the time you get to draw three cards but most of the time it's just a three mana three four so overall i think i think it's a little bit more likely than people think that you can actually do this because you can gain information the way it works is you have to choose a clue from what was in their starting hand, what's in their current hand, what's in their deck. There's ways to peek at their hand and deck, right? There's, they might shuffle things into their deck. You you can see what was in their opening hand because they would have played it already, probably. So there's ways to gain information. So I think you can actually get this more often than people think. But still, you're going to miss most of the time. So most of the time it's a 3 mana 3 4, but it'll just occasionally win you a game. So I think it's a little better than actually people think. But, you know, draft accordingly. Next one is Prince Renathal, which is a 3 mana 3 4, which is terrorizing other formats, but is not in Arena. They, this is not a thing you're going to see in Arena, so don't worry about it. 
Next one we have is Demolition Renovator. It's a 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. Epic Battle Cry. Destroy an enemy location. The only way in the game, I believe, to actually interact with your opponent's locations. But overall, it's a 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. I think all the locations are like at least rare rarity, right? I think they might all be rare rarity. I would have to check. I don't know if anyone in chat knows. But yeah, like, I don't think they're common, any of them. I could be wrong. So most of the time, this just isn't going to do anything. But occasionally it could be very good. Overall, you probably shouldn't draft it very highly because it's just usually not going to do much. The odds of your point actually having a location are just not high enough. But obviously it could have its moments. Next one we have here is Dispossessed Soul. Four map, four or five. Valkyrie, if you control a location and your opponent hasn't destroyed it with the last card yet, discover a copy of a card in your deck. So a lot of the time, and most of the time, this is just going to be a Yeti. If you do get to trigger this effect, very, very good. And if you have a location also, you're probably pretty happy because location cards are generally pretty good. But yeah, most of the time, just going to be a Yeti. A Yeti with conditional upside, you know. I guess so. I guess that puts it like something like a three to three and a half star card, I would say, yeah. To discover. They haven't nerfed all discovers. You'll they, they uh, there's no reason they would have like penalized something like this. You'll you'll get offered this at the rarity of a normal rare. The uh next card we have here is Merlocula, Mer Mer which has the greatest flavor text in the game when he said it's Merkle in time and totally Mergled those guys. Got him. It's a 4 mana 3 4 Murloc with Lifesteal and also with Infuse. This cost Infuse 4. This costs 0. So Infuse 4 is very. is going to be pretty tricky. I mean, you would ideally play this pretty much as early as possible, but Infuse 4 means you, you're not going to get to play it. I don't know. You might play it on like turn 5, turn 6 for 0 mana, which is nice, right? You get like a 0 mana 3 4 on, I guess, like maybe like turn 6 or something. So it's actually not too bad, but you have to wait a little longer for this. It's kind of like a Corridor Creeper, yeah. So overall, I think people might be underrating this a little bit, but yeah, it's not it's not amazing, but it's it's pretty good. Because yeah, I think a lot of people have been rating it below average. I think it's definitely not below average. It's definitely above average, but it's still not, it's not crazy, crazy good. Next card we have here is Scuttlebutt Ghoul. This is a 4 mana 2 5 taunt. It's a common as well. Valkyrie, if you summon a secret, control summon a copy of this. So theoretically, you can get secrets in every class, but. And I believe that card was also a common, right? The card that discovers secrets. So it's a thing you can do in every class, but most of the time you're still not going to expect to do this unless you're picking an actual secret class. And if you do happen to get a secret, then and you can play this on curve this is absolutely absurd two two five taunts for four mana is absolutely nuts the issue though is that to actually do that on curve you would have to actually play this you know you have to play the secret the secret have to not go off and then you and then you play this so that's going to be a little bit tricky if you have like a one mana secret maybe you can just combo it with this and then that would be a lot easier but you know, in most, so most of the time this card's kind of bad, but if you have the right conditions, a one or two mana secret especially, then you can definitely draft this a lot higher, but most of the time not going to be great. Moving on, we have the next card, Theotar the Mad Duke. This is a four mana three three battle cry. It's a legendary, by the way. Discover a card in each player's hand and swap them. So you get to choose both of them. This is not random. Well, it's random because if people have more than three cards, then you get to see things. But this is this seems very, very good to me. You get to like steal your opponent's flame strike or steal their late game legendary or something. It's going to be one of these things where I, I feel like you're always going to get you you're not going to if your hand is all good, you're just not going to play this right. So but you get to 
you'll, you're going to give your opponent probably at worst, you can give them like a two mana two, three or something. You can steal something much better than a two mana two, three. So I don't see when this is ever realistically going to be bad. It's a, it, I mean, it's just not a tempo card, but this seems very, very strong to me. Unfortunately, though, it is up against, it is in the legendary bracket. So you're going to often just have probably better choices than this. So you are just, it's not, it's definitely not like a five star legendary. So you're just often going to have a better choice than this. I think otherwise, I think if this was not a legendary, I think you would almost always pick it. But because it's a legendary, you will just have better choices because you're going to have more reliable legendary picks most of the time than this. But I think this is like probably a four star card. Just a lot of legendaries are better. We'll be on next to Famished Fool. This is a five mana three five Valkyrie draw card. But if you have Infuse plus four, draw three instead. So I think this card is very, very good. Personally, I think I'm going to draft this card like every time it's offered to me, actually. Because here's the thing, you have Infuse 4 on this, right? But it's a D-Tempo card draw, and you don't want to play this on curve anyway, because you don't want a D-Tempo to play this. So the Infuse, the only real cost of the Infuse here, from what I see, is that if you draw it really later on, if you draw it really late, if your hand's already empty or whatever, in that case you're kind of screwed anyway. But at least you're getting a five, you're getting a cycle with the three five body, right? So even in that case, it's not terrible. But otherwise, like the infuse is gonna just happen because you're just going to, you're not even gonna want to play this on curve. So it's access to, as Zapper said, it's neutral card draw, which is something that a lot of classes just don't have access to. So this is just incredibly, incredibly good. I think this is going to be a card that I'm going to take. Like, It enables you to play in ways that you just can't play reliably right now. It basically, if you're in like another class, it gives you the sustain of a warlock, essentially. It's just crazy, crazy good. You probably still you wouldn't take it over like something absolutely giga premium, but yeah, I would draft this very, I will draft this very, very highly. Next card we have here is Muck Plumber. This is a 5 mana 5 5 <laughs> common card. All minions cost 2 more. So, this is a weird one because it's good the turn you play it because you block your opponent's curve play, kind of like the 3 drop did. However, the issue is, is that first of all, if it just gets removed, it doesn't really matter. But second of all, if it doesn't get removed, your opponent isn't going to directly contest it. They won't have the ability to because they can't play a minion on curve that contests it because it's blocked. So this thing is not going to die, which means the next turn you have the same penalty yourself. <laughs> so it's never really going to be that good. The way you would want to use this is you want to be pushing and then you play this kind of as a low thub. That's what you would want to do. And in that case, it's very, very good. A lot of times, in a lot of like average like mid range decks, this is gonna hurt you pretty much as much as it hurts your opponent. So, yeah, you know, overall, it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be terrible, but it's not gonna be great. It's probably like a two to three star card, but it's never gonna be terrible. What happened? Wait, our seven TV emotes are gone. Wait, why did this happen? Oh, we'll figure that out later. Let's get through the rest of these. The first one we have here is Sin Runner. 5 mana 6 5. Beast. Death Rattle. Destroy a random enemy minion. First question we have to ask is why? Why on earth does this need to be a thing? A Death Rattle spawn of Deathwing. Yeah. Overall, I mean, it's going to be one of those things where most of the time, it's probably not going to be like giga game winning because your opponent's going to have the ability to kind of mitigate it and make it not completely win you the game but occasionally it's just going to automatically win you a game <laughs> so overall i think it's probably just like a four star card but it's a very very good neutral because i think just most of the time it's just not going to do that much but it's going to like really disrupt your opponent a lot of the time it's going to be very frustrating it's a pretty pretty darn good five drop 
Next one we have here is Steam Cleaner. It's a 5 mana 5 5 Mac Valkyrie. Destroy all cards in both players' decks that didn't start there. This is an absolute F you button to certain cards like Fires of Zinashari, Lady Prester, all of these things. And those things do exist in Arena. So, like, well, also, like, um, what's the, the rogue one as well, Serathine? There's like certain ways this can actually just win you the game automatically, but those are gonna be very rare. But overall, like, it also destroys like sunken minions. You can play this whenever they try to dredge up their sunken minion, theoretically. But yeah, most of the time, <laughs> it's just not gonna do that much, but it's occasionally going to be. In a very rare instances, it'll win you the game automatically. In the worst cases, though, it's which is going to be most of the time, it's just a five mana five five mech, which is not great, but also not terrible. So you can play this, but you shouldn't you shouldn't pick this over like actually good cards. Next up, what we have here is Stoneborn Accuser. It's a five mana five five with Infuse five. It's a common, so you'll see it a lot. Gain Infuse five, gain Balcry, deal five damage. So, unlike the other one, which I said, you know, the one which draws cards, this is a very expensive infuse. First of all, it's five infuse, which is a lot. It practically guarantees you're not going to be able to play it on curve ever. But you'll get it eventually if it's in your hand. But a lot of times, like, it's going to happen if you draw this later on, you're not going to be able to trigger the infuse a lot. So it's going to be just a five mana five five, which is not good. If you, you know, you, you this might actually be a card you want to keep in your opening hand so you can actually use it effectively. Because if you keep it in the opening hand, you can probably trigger it around turn 6, turn 7. You're basically getting, like, a much better pick rock in that case. Because it's just cheaper and you can maybe get it a turn or two early. But it's, it's going to be one of those things that this card is just not going to be consistent. It's either going to be very good or it's going to suck. And there's not going to, there's not going to be a lot of in-between, I think. So... It's something you, I don't think for a consistent strategy, you want to draft this actually, but it's one of those like super high roll cards basically. So I don't think I would rate it super highly, but obviously if you have, especially if you have really good like infuse triggers, like multi-body summons, it gets a lot better, but otherwise it's going to be a little painful because you have to hold it a little bit too long to actually make it work. Talking about good infused triggers though, we have one right here because this is Bog Beast, which is not a beast. Blizzard, excuse me. Why is this not a beast? Anyway, this is a six mana three six taunt death rattle, summon a two four muckmare with taunt. So this is basically just a reincarnation of Sludge Belcher. It's probably a bit better than Sludge Belcher, but also Sludge Belcher was made like seven, eight years ago. So <laughs> Relatively speaking, it's not it's not going to feel nearly as good as Sludge Belcher did just because of the uh, higher power level of game. But it's still good. You're going to pick it a lot. So like it's probably an above average card. So like a three to four star neutral card. It's going to be pretty good. And it is two infused triggers, as we said. Both of them have taunt. So it's just it's just a lot of taunt. It's 10 health of taunt for six mana. It's just going to get your opponent's going to be able to value trade at least half of it pretty often so it's just not going to be that good on board but it's like sludge belcher right it was just annoying it just gets in the way so overall good card but not crazy crazy good next one we have here is kael'thas sin strider it's a six mana four seven it's basically kael if you're familiar with the old kael'thas this is kael'thas but minions basically so i actually think this card is very good in arena because you play this on turn eight with a two drop and then you just play a giant minion because it counts itself the turn you play it so you just combo this with an early game minion on whenever you can turn seven turn eight turn nine and then you just get to play the biggest card you have and you get an absolutely insane tempo swing that turn you play it that's gonna be what you do the other way i mean obviously you could also just play this hope it doesn't die and then you could also you know do it the next turn so i think people initially se severely underestimated how much you can actually you're going to be able to trigger this because you will be able to trigger this a lot assuming you actually have minions in your hand you'll be able to trigger this once if you want to 
but um so this will be very annoying because it will if you the only you know the main condition is that you need to have something big enough that's actually worth justifying this for you but if you have like an eight there's like a 10 drop common neutral coming in like there's ways to really get pretty consistent value out of this so i think this is actually very good but it's going to kind of depend on what your deck looks like you're going to want to have a little bit of card draw or something to make this go off but i think you can make this go off very very easily so i think it's actually very good you'll probably only get one trigger out of it because you're just going to run out of cards but i think it's going to be something you can trigger almost every time moving on next one we have masked reveler it's a six mana four four rush death rattle summon a two two copy of another minion in your deck interesting so this is just i mean you need to like have some very specific combo in mind which you cannot do in arena <laughs> because it's just not um you have other minions in your deck most of your deck is minions all the time so there's some chance you can high roll into something you can high roll into the same 10 drop which we're going to talk about pretty soon but most of the time this is just gonna it's not enough stats for the cost for it to actually be good having said that like i mean a six mana four four rush that summons a two two and it's like it's like a really really bad mothership right but mothership's absolutely insane it's not like terrible but it's not good i think it's still i think it's still just a below average card but it's actually not terrible right it's just not it's just not good some very small chance of high rolling but yeah what is pretty consistently good though is this card this is red herring this is a seven mana 312 taunt he's a beast as well you non red herring minions have stealth so this is going to be very frustrating to play against because what you would want to do is you would avery artemis thanks for the prime sub what you want to do is you want to like have minions on board you trade with them you value trade and then you play this and those minions are not you know your opponent cannot finish off those minions unless they have like an aoe or something you can't they can't ping off your minions at one health they can't use their cheap removal to finish off your big minions that have value traded right you just can't so because everything's gonna have stealth so this is going to be very very annoying but yeah it's a very very and overall i mean the seven mana 312 is that's just a lot of stats it's one stat less than sleepy dragon so you're getting a two mana cheaper there's like no there's just never gonna be a time that this is bad obviously if it gets removed it's vulnerable to hard removal like any big minion is but it's going to be very good a lot of the time you're gonna be it's a common so this will be a kind of meta defining neutral and it's gonna be a big reason you're gonna want to take probably every hard removal you're offered now Next card we have is Sinfield Golem. This is a 7 mana 2-2, two, two, Infuse 3. Gain stats equal to the attack of the minions that infuse this. So from my understanding, this is just... Um, so it's the attack of the minions that infuse this, which would mean, hypothetically, you could have high attack, low health minions die. And it's only the attack, and you gain attack and health equal to that attack. So if you just have, like, I don't know, a four, a four attack me and die, a three attack me and die, another four attack me and die. This is like what? That was 11 stats, so this is a 13 13. The issue is, is that you cannot control this. This starts ticking whenever you draw it, right? So at that point, like if you have a bunch of cheap minions on your board that are going to die, you, you know, you, you're kind of screwed, right? You can only infuse it with the small minions. So it's going to be kind of random it's going to occasionally instantly win you the game if you can only even if you have two small minions on your board you can play one big minion and just one big minion will make this worth it though so it's going to be like very very good on average i think but it's going to occasionally just be awkward huh. yeah that is true this is a way to completely ruin your own evolve stuff as well but yeah i think overall like you're probably gonna draft it pretty highly because it's just on average like even if you have just like a two attack minion a two attack minion a three attack minion infuse this that's still this is still in that case a seven mana nine nine that's gonna it's usually not gonna be that much worse than this so most of the time this is just going to most of the time be very very good 
occasionally it'll suck because the worst case scenario if it's three ones then it would be a five five right but it's usually going to be much much better than that the the one issue though is that you know you have to infuse this you can't play this unfused it's literally not a card so that makes it slightly worse but overall i think it's going to be worth it's going to basically just be worth it so i think it's going to be good next one we have here is party crasher the eight mana seven nine bow cry choose an enemy minion choose an enemy minion throw a random minion from your hand at it by the time you're on eight mana you can probably you know manipulate your hand pretty well to make this actually pretty consistent it's gonna be frustrating when you empty all the small stuff out of your hand into your turn eight and then you just top deck a two drop and then you're like god darn it but yeah i think it's gonna be pretty good because you're getting a summon there's a potential liability that if you can't get your good battle cries out of your hand then you might not want to use this right because you don't get, you get to choose what you're throwing your minion at but you don't get to choose what you're actually using you don't get to choose what which card out of your hand so it could be a little awkward but you could also pull a colossal theoretically but overall yeah it's just a lot of stats and it's a you're getting a lot of stats onto the board with this so it's going to be pretty good overall so the way that this works from my understanding is that basically the one thing i don't know is that if you get a if you get like a slime scale diver i'm pretty sure the thing's just going to come out with dormant i think i don't know actually there's some questions because like i don't think it what my question is is that if you throw out a rush minion in general i think it like the the throw minion means it attacks basically but i don't think it counts as an attack so i think a rush minion can still attack that would be my understanding and i think a dormant would come out and it just wouldn't actually get i don't think it would actually be able to attack i think it would just be dormant but i think a rush minion might actually be able to attack again so if you can pull a big rush minion this is absolutely insane and there's like the 10 drop which i think is the next card maybe odo okay there's like two more but like if you pull this thing out i think it can attack twice because that would be this would be like the ultimate high roll right would be to pull this guy out but yeah there's going to be just like ways that this will be overall i think it's going to be pretty good you're not going to see it too much because it's an epic and it's going to pra crash a lot of your hopes and dreams when it does come out let's move on to insatiable devourer because this card is banned from arena this is absolutely absolutely insane it would be like the first seven star card in history but um <laughs> it is banned from draft However, you might still be able to get it randomly off of Discover somehow. Basically, I mean, this thing, in its base form, this is like a super, it's like a better Alexstrasza and its base form, except you can't, you can't Alex the face, but it's like an Alex. But then if you infuse it five times, which wouldn't be that hard on a nine drop, then it's, it's absolutely insane. It's banned from Arena though, so we don't have to worry about it. The next card we have here is Sire Denathrius. This is a 10 mana 10 10 legendary with a life steal. Battle cry deal five damage amongst enemies. Endlessly infuse for one to make it deal one more damage. So from my understanding, this is I mean this is among enemies. So it's basically like it basically casts arcane missiles, but you get life steal. And actually I think it's slightly different, right? From my understanding, like I'm not entirely sure, but I think it might actually like not be quite arcane missiles. I think the damage actually deals like a random amount as well. So there's theoretically you could theoretically get kecked by divine shields or something. But um I don't think it'll overkill. That's my understanding. But anyway, it's not super important. This is like basically just a super late game win condition. Because if you get to if you get this up to like i don't know 12 13 14 damage or something then it's just gonna kill pretty much everything and also if you were low you're not low anymore basically right but you do have to it's not a great top deck i mean it's not terrible it's still a 10 10 that deals five damage to enemies right but it can go face as well which you wouldn't necessarily want it's not that bad at its base but it obviously becomes like a super win condition later on so overall it's pretty good pretty good pretty good not like probably you'd probably still take like something like a raid boss over it but it's it's a good legendary and the last card we have here is probably the last card here that's going to be super meta defining which is stoneborn general this is basically the reincarnation of like dig day type cards it's a 10 mana 8 8 rush with a death rattle summon an 8 8 grave wing that also has a rush so 
it's a lot of stats for 10 mana. The, the one thing is, is that it's going to be sometimes, especially if you're really under pressure, it's going to be a little bit slow, because even though it has rush, it's only one, it's only going to kill one thing, right? If it has a, a big thing to run into that actually lets you get the death roll immediately, it'd be very good defensively, but most of the time it won't be able to, right? It's going to survive the hit, so you're only getting one thing, which means if you're like staring down lethal, this probably won't be enough to save you immediately but obviously it's like a 10 mana 16 16 with rush <laughs> overall it's just like a very very good super value card and some potential synergy with some of the other cards as well so yeah it's going to be a card you see a lot of I'm wondering if it might even get its offering right penalized maybe because it's like very very good overall yeah, just very strong card. You're going to be picking it almost every time, probably. Assuming you're not playing, like, super super aggro or something. But, yeah. Well, with that, that is it for the neutral cards. So, thanks all for hanging out. Everyone on YouTube, people on Twitch can say goodbye to YouTube. But, yeah, let's get started with... After this, we can get started with all of the uh, class cards. But, yeah, thanks a lot again for hanging out, everyone. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.